Good afternoon. I am Mike Townsley and I have been assigned to serve as the hearing officer for the Public Utilities Commission in this matter, which is an investigation pursuant to 30 VSA sections 209 and 30 regarding the alleged failure of Vermont Gas Systems Incorporated to comply with the Certificate of Public Good in Docket 7970 by burying the pipeline at less than the required depth in New Haven, Vermont. The commission case number is 17-3550-IMV for this case. We are together today in Montpelier to conduct a status conference. There are several issues to discuss in today's status conference. Uh, for my own sake, I've attempted to isolate what I think they are, uh, and there may be more. And I'll just go down a list, and I'd ask council to, to kind of follow me a little bit, because I'm going to be going back unless we suggest a different schedule. With, uh, with these questions as we move through the status conference today. Excuse me, Mr. Kelsey, do you want to take appearances before we go any further? Um, as soon as I'm done okay. with this little bit. Uh, and then I'll, I'll go over these issues again and then we'll, after we do appearances. Uh, the first issue is, is holding a public hearing and informational session in this proceeding. The second is addressing for the record the intervener's request that the scope of the investigation be expanded. The third is remaining party concerns with BGS's filings seeking to certify the pipeline's depth. The fourth is defining a non-substantial change determination and applying it as VGS proposes. Fifth is determining whether VGS violated the 2013 final order in CPG. Sixth is uh, if there was a violation, what penalty, if any, should be, would be appropriate? And seven, preparing a schedule for the remainder of this proceeding. This is not an evidentiary hearing, nor is it an opportunity to litigate final resolution of many of these issues. However, it is an opportunity for the parties to talk about them in an effort to achieve, to clarify the issues and assist in their resolution. First, I'd like to take appearances. So if you could state your name and your affiliation with this matter. Then I'll summarize the off-the-record discussion we just concluded. Jim Porter on behalf of the Department of Public Service, and with me today is Tracy Leibowitz, who is a new lawyer with the department. Don Einhorn for the Natural Resources Agency. Uh, James Dumont for Interveners. Deborah Bufard from Sheehy for Long and Beam. I'm here today on behalf of Vermont Gas Systems Incorporated. And with me from Vermont Gas is Beth Parent, as well as Chris LaForce, who's at the table with me. And Chris is the project engineering manager. And as well, Eileen Similardis had planned to attend with me today. And unfortunately, she had to go out of town uh, to attend to a, a family emergency, so she couldn't join us. Okay. Could you also use the mic? I, I could not hear. Thank you. Is it, is it on? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me state again uh, what those seven things are, those seven issues, because I, I did rattle through them relatively quickly, and for counsel's sake, I want to repeat them. Uh, the first issue, at least as I see them, and, and if, if there are others, uh, uh, we'll want to talk about those as well is uh, holding a public hearing and informational session in this proceeding. Uh, I see this as an opportunity uh, for uh, the parties to address with the public uh, in an informational session uh, the certification process, uh, that is, as well as the, the burial, basically the processes that VGS undertook and the examination that's been done by it into it, or the investigation into it that's been conducted. As well as conducting a public hearing afterwards, that will allow the public to uh, to speak to and address their concerns, uh, if any that they have with regard to uh, this investigation. The second issue is uh, addressing, for the record, the intervener's request that the scope of this investigation be expanded. The third is uh, remaining party concerns with VGS's filings seeking to certify the pipeline's depth. And uh, it's kind of an opaque issue, 
uh, if only because there are a lot of issues that are a lot of potential concerns that, that may still be out there. There has been some back and forth between the parties to in an attempt to refine those issues, but the degree to which we can uh, isolate uh, the re remaining areas of concern uh, that the parties have with regard to uh, this pr the issues that arise in this proceeding, uh, we want to try to at least flesh them out, not necessarily solve them today. So that when we do get to a, um, an evidential hearing, we know what the, we're there for. Uh, the fourth one is defining a non-substantial change determination and applying it as VGS proposes. Uh, Non-substantial change, change determinations as they've been used most often uh, are not a, uh, are, are an item of precedent. There's no, uh, as I understand it at least, and correct me if I'm wrong, there, there is no rule that defines a non-substantial change determination process. Generally, as it has occurred in Docket 7970, for example, there were five previous non-substantial change determination requests. Those arose when uh, the company sought to make changes to what they had proposed in their petition before they undertook uh, to, to make those changes. Uh, in, in this case, uh, we have a different setting where uh, the company proposes to apply a non-substantial, or to request a non, has requested a non-substantial change determination after they've done the action that would cover uh, the non-substantial change determination. And then the question is, uh, there, since there is no uh, rule or regulation or law that addresses uh, what a non-substantial change determination is and when it should be applied, I think that uh, I bring this up now just so the parties are prepared, not today necessarily, to address whether or not a non-substantial change determination is an appropriate uh, response uh, for the, the commission to make uh, in response to the filing uh, from, the, from the company uh, regarding the uh, 18 uh, locations in New Haven that the burial depth wasn't uh, four feet. So that's number four. Uh, number five is uh, determining whether BGS violated the 2013 <coughs> final order in CPG. Um, and I bring that up because uh, that is what the investigation is for. Uh, we're not going to resolve that today. Uh, but in uh, the back and forth of uh, looking at the affidavits and the details associated with them, uh, sometimes that ultimate purpose can be lost. and. And I want to make sure that the parties are aware of the need to present evidence uh, that, that addresses uh, whether or not the 2013 final order of CPG uh, have been violated or not. Uh, and then the sixth is related, is um, if there was a violation of the 2013 final order of CPG, what penalty, if any, is appropriate? Um, and title, section 30 of Title 30 provides criteria for determining how the, for, for the board to consider in making a penalty determination. Generally, in a 30-30 in a investigation, uh, the parties provide some evidence uh, to support arguments under each of those criteria. So I, I saw that as another issue that, at least in my refining where we're moving forward, uh, how we're moving forward, that, that needed to come up. And finally, uh, preparing a schedule for the remainder of the proceeding. Uh, those were the, the seven things that I thought that we uh, at least needed to talk about a little bit today, uh, if not, uh, and, and likely not resolved, but at least make sure they were there as we move forward uh, towards uh, the next steps. Have the parties had any discussion uh, as to an appropriate way ahead in this proceeding? This is... Uh on behalf of interveners, I've exchanged emails with the company's lawyer, so the company's lawyers know that we expect discovery. Um, they have not agreed to that. Okay. Is your mic on? No, sorry. <coughs> oh, just, sorry. Don't you repeat that? I can, I can no. hear it, but I just thought it'd be good if you were consistent. Thank you. 
Uh, what matters did you want discovery into? Uh, one of the principal ones is what actually happened at the Clay Plain Swamp in New Haven. We have so far received Mr. St. Hilaire's affidavit stating that he talked to unnamed people and he's satisfied that it happened the way the company says. We want to talk to those unnamed people. We have good reason to believe that when they're asked directly, it will be much more productive of useful information for the board, for the commission. Okay. Does the company have a response? With respect to um, discovery in general, um, it's, it's our position that we provided um, the commission with information to address the requests in the various orders from the commission. Um, we think there's information already presented in the form of the affidavits and the voluminous attachments to address the issues before the commission. But absolutely, if the commission feels it needs additional information from BGS, um, we're prepared to provide the PUC with that information. Does the department or the agency have a position with regard to discovery? We don't have the need for discovery. And I think from the department's perspective, um, we're satisfied with the filings that have been made um, today, and we don't have the need for any further discovery. If, if I could elaborate a little bit, I just just need, just, uh, I was going to ask you a question, and maybe what you were just going to say, uh, but uh, uh, I mean, the purpose of the discovery would be to prepare you for cross-examination of Mr. Salier and other witnesses. Is, is that correct? Yes, and also. Um, if necessary to ask the board to commission, I keep on saying board, ask the commission to issue a subpoena for witnesses to be present. Okay. Um, with a proffer as to what the nature and quality of their Absolutely. potential evidence. Absolutely, right. right. So, um, what I was going to say, I'm sorry, is that the, the Clay Plain Swamp is the most pressing need for us to take a deposition. Um, the other questions we have, we I think some interrogatories and requests to produce would suffice. Okay. So, so the, the, the follow-on discovery would be in the form of interrogatories at deposition. And, and requests to produce, yes. And, and, and requests to produce, and potentially subpoenas. Yes. Okay. I might. My clients might need a subpoena in order to obtain a de deposition testimony because. I expect the most important witnesses will be non-parties, so the only way I can summon them to a deposition would be for a subpoena for a deposition. I'm guessing that this would be for a contractor personnel who aren't? That's correct. Eighth issue, and we'll discuss that more when we get to the seventh issue, which is the schedule. Uh, before we get started, I just had I have one question for Mr. Einhorn. Uh, in reviewing my materials in EPUC today, uh, I think the last thing that I saw from the department was a document indicating you were going to make another filing in response to the August 11th certification. Is that correct? Correct. So you're still working on that? We, we, yeah, we intend to do that very shortly. We okay. completed the analysis okay. of the non-jurisdictional stream crossings and uh, okay. have a position on that now. Okay. So we can, we can do that. When do you, when do you anticipate that being available? Um, I think we could probably do that this week. I mean, I'm not rushing it because we yep.
with that, I think I'll, I'll go back to the list and uh, uh, ask the parties to respond to uh, when and where and how they'd like to uh, conduct uh, a public hearing and informational session in this proceeding, or if there's been any discussion between the parties about this. So from the department's perspective, we have anticipated a public hearing. Um, obviously, we think it would be um, appropriate to have it located within the area of the pipeline. And um, beyond that, I haven't really I like considered Bristol. that. The town, the big old town hall building where we did that. Bristol is a nice town. It's pretty close to uh, where we're at in terms of potential size for a party or for a public hearing. Uh, related to activities in Moncton and New Haven too. Uh, there may be another site in New Haven, but uh, we could use a New Haven town hall as well. Just with making it easier for Mr. Dumont to just walk up the street, I guess. But as a, someone who has an office in Bristol, I can tell you the acoustics in that space in Bristol are very poor. I mean, for the larger space, the, and everybody complains about it, and there's a local fundraising effort going on to change the buildings so the acoustics aren't a disaster. Um, for that reason, if a significant number of people are expected, it might be better to use the high school auditorium, which is just a half, a half mile away, but the acoustics are much better. As far as the um, public hearing itself, <coughs> I don't know if anyone else has thought about who would participate, um, but I would hope that it would not just be the company. Right, the, my expectation would be that it would be very similar to what we saw in the Harsh Sunflower case, uh, investigation case, where uh, the company, uh, the department, and the agency, uh, which is often the situation with almost all of our informational sessions as we're now using them, uh, basically the department would host the event and provide relevant information and allow the other, uh, the agency and the and the company, as well as the department, to provide information to the public and be responsive to questions about what's taken place from a factual perspective. So I would ask the hearing officer to consider whether or not some of the interveners might also be on the list of who's presenting information to start the proceeding off. We have exhibits and other, and other information that we could be succinct with, but it might help focus the discussion. Okay. Uh, that isn't something I thought of, but not a bad idea. Uh, what do the other parties think? We don't have any objection to that. It's fine with a &R. I think what makes sense if this is acceptable to the hearing officer is I'm happy to speak with the um, council to the other parties and come up with a proposal, including a proposed location, a date, um, concept in terms of what information will be shared and then I can file that with the hearing officer with some proposed dates if that's acceptable. That sounds good. I mean, um, there, I don't think you, I mean, just generally we, we allow for an hour for the informational session. I don't think you need to be bound by that. I think if you got toward two hours, it might be a little bit long, uh, but uh, one to two hours um, and that after that would be uh, you know, the, the second hour would, would go into the public hearing time because we'll finish at 10. So generally the idea would be to start at 6 and finish by 10 uh, with the event, with the uh, public hearing following the informational session. And I'll, I'll uh, stand by for uh, a filing from the company uh, proposing uh, a time date and location. after his discussion with the other council. The second issue is, is, have we had enough discussion with regard to the first issue? Yes. Uh, the second issue is addressing for the record the intervener's request that the scope of the investigation be expanded. Uh, upon addressing the record today, uh, at least the materials that are filed in the PUC, uh, I think the request is moot in as much as, uh, in, in two ways, uh, in as much as the, uh, the initial investigation uh, included uh, a review of uh, a certification of the entire pipeline length, which includes the 
stream crossings as well as the residential area. So I don't think that, I think that we don't need to expand the scope because it was within the scope. And I think we've also seen in practicality that uh, the parties have been acting as if it's within the scope anyway. So uh, I'm not going to make a ruling on that other than to state that it's, it's moot. For the parties, is there any objection? No objection. No objection. No. Very well. <clears throat> the third one is remaining party concerns with VGS's filings seeking to certify the pipeline's depth. Um, and this is kind of open to how you want to fill this issue discussion. Uh, this is an opportunity for the parties uh, in a non-litigated, to the extent that it's not litigated setting, uh, to talk about the remaining issues that uh, would be addressed uh, in a follow-on evidentiary hearing. Uh, we've had uh, <coughs> The August 11th filing, which is the certification uh, response to that from the parties, and then uh, a rebuttal response to a degree uh, from the company, each of which shaped uh, to a degree uh, the remaining issues associated with uh, that certification, which is the fundamental element of, of uh, the investigation. Um, uh, one thing I didn't see a lot of in, in those discussions were um, uh, addressing the um, the root cause analysis. Whether uh, whether the parties thought the root cause analysis was, I think the department addressed this a little bit in its comments. But whether the parties thought the root cause analysis uh, was sufficient, uh, the, the, was the request, uh, was the response that that, uh, that the company made providing a root cause analysis, providing root cause analyses for. Uh, for three different events, um, and uh, whether whether the parties thought that, that those uh, root cause analyses were sufficient to address uh, at least what they uh, believe uh, occurred in this event and those others event, other events to the extent that they have knowledge of them. Uh, I, I ask this because this is uh, particularly related to any penalty determination. Um, you know, if 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 uh, it may be that the commission will want more. Or that they'll be content if the parties are content. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I've seen root cause analyses before, and sometimes they kind of look like what we saw, and sometimes they kind of look like something else. Uh, but that's only because I spend a lot of time in the military, where people always spend a lot of time criticizing each other's behavior, uh, uh, and that's what happens in a root cause analysis: uh, is is an in-depth uh, uh, investigation into uh, an almost finite investigation into uh, why a, an event occurred and uh, what caused the event and then what action steps the, uh, the appropriate parties would be taking in response to what they discovered in their investigation. So I, I would ask the parties again to, uh, to look at those uh, root cause analyses and, and, and uh, make suggestions if appropriate or at least have a, a, an opinion as to whether or not they were adequate, and if they're inadequate, yeah. how they might need to be supplemented. Mr. Hearing Officer, may I respond? Yeah. First of all, I think I need to stop calling you hit Mr. Hearing Officer and say, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's a different part of my life. <laughs> so in, in answer to your questions about our remaining concerns, our remaining concerns do go to the root cause analysis and also the August 11th certification. And it's because of what we feel are very large gaps that we think discovery is appropriate. And rather than address them today, we want to address them after we've had some discovery. Okay, I understand. Do the parties have additional comments regarding uh, concerns that they'd like to articulate? If not, that's okay. Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, to the fourth issue, and again, uh, I, I, I don't anticipate, I bring this up because I think this is an issue that has not been addressed in the party's uh, memoranda of law uh, regarding this proceeding, uh, and that is uh, the degree to which uh, uh, a non-substantial change determination is defined and, and whether 
uh, or to what degree it's applicable uh, in this circumstance. So again, I, I bring that up because uh, that's something that I know I will be asking questions about uh, and we'll look forward to hopefully seeing uh, some discussion from the parties about uh, in future filings. Are there any questions about that now? <coughs> Issue, the fifth and sixth issues, again, are the ultimate issues. Uh, that is, whether there was a violation of the final order in CPG uh, and whether, and if there was, uh, whether a penalty is appropriate. Uh, again, I bring those up to remind the parties that that's why we're here and that's what the, the focus of uh, the investigation is. Uh, and then finally, uh, what may be, well, uh, is, is preparing a schedule for the remainder of the proceeding. Have the parties had any discussions with regard to scheduling other than uh, noting that uh, the interveners want to do uh, a little bit more discovery? There have been no other discussions. Okay. Uh, would you like to attempt to put together a schedule now? Sure. I think that's good. Okay. I think I would like to leave the room while you do that. Uh, and you can read privately too if that would facilitate your discussion. Do you think you could come up with the schedule today, or should we just wait? I don't have a calendar in front of me, so I can't do it. But. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have a, a discussion more about a schedule going forward, but um, I, I want to go back to what I started talking about earlier, that um, you know, at this point... Can um, you use the mic? At this point, um, BGS has provided the PUC with the information um, that was requested in the various orders and certainly pleased to give the PUC any additional information that it feels like it needs to rule on the matters before it. Um, but uh, we've heard from the department and we've heard from the agency that they don't feel there's a need for any further discovery process at, at this point in time. So. Um, you know, I think that's an open item. As okay, well, let me rule on that then. Discovery will be allowed in order to ensure effective cross-examination of the existing witnesses and the development of any further evidence that might be produced. However, I think that this isn't uh, a fishing expedition. Uh, if there are unreasonable extents to which discovery is, is, is going, uh, you know, I would be willing to listen to why that's unreasonable and shut it down, but if it's reasonable, we'll move forward. Uh, uh, you know, again, I think that uh, there has been a great deal of information provided by the company in the form of its affidavits, uh, but that kind of information generally leads to further questions, and I think that's where we're at, and that's why we need discovery in response to it. Uh, so uh, I would ask that uh, uh, I would rule or determine here that further discovery is appropriate and that your schedule should, should address it. Other comments. So, so I, what I'm hearing, I think, is that it might be hard to do a schedule just now. Uh, I think that might be a challenge to, to do that right now, and we can. Um, and you can, we can, we can adjourn, and you guys can get together in a room and talk about it. Again, I'm, I'm not in a rush, so it's 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 uh, just there's 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 an opportunity here that I don't want you to lose in terms of uh, the ability to get all the council together in a room to produce a schedule. This isn't a pre-hearing conference, which is generally what one is expected, uh, but it, this is an opportunity for you to attempt to generate a schedule. I just thought I would suggest that as, as something that could be done. I'm game for it. I think it's a good idea, but if Attorney Bufard needs to consult with her clients more, then we won't be able to reach a resolution today, which is fine. I understand that. Right. Okay. Um, what I think I'll do then uh, is uh, I'll ask the company uh, to uh, provide me with uh, either uh, a schedule for the proceeding uh, agreed upon by the parties uh, in two weeks. So today is the 10th, so on uh, October 24th, not having a calendar in front of me, I think it's <coughs> uh, if that's a, If that's a sufficient amount of time, not knowing what your schedules are. Either to provide a schedule or to provide a status report as to what a schedule might be available. Does that sound reasonable? It does. Is there any objection? 
No. No objection. Are there any other matters that uh, or issues that we want to bring up in today's uh, status conference? From the department? From the agency? No. From the interveners? No, your, your schedule, your list of issues has covered everything. Thank you. From the company? Nothing further. Thank you. Very well. We're adjourned. Thank you.